All right, so we've got chapter 33 today, a really important chapter for all the sheepdogs and watchmen out there. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people and say to them, If I bring a sword upon the land, and the people of the land take one man from among them and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows on the trumpet and warns the people, then he who hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood will be on himself. But had he taken warning, he would have delivered his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity but his blood I will require from the watchman's hand. Pause. This passage has implication for us today in that God's laborers are called to warn others of his impending judgment upon mankind and make them aware of his gospel of grace. Verse seven. Now as for you, son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. So you will hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you will surely die and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hand. But if you on your part warn a wicked man to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your life. Now as for you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus you have spoken, saying, surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us and we are rotting away in them. How then can we survive? Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Why then will you die, O house of Israel? And you, son of man, say to your fellow citizens, The righteousness of a righteous man will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. That's really important. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, he will not stumble because of it in the day when he turns from his wickedness. Whereas a righteous man will not be able to live by his righteousness on the day when he commits sin. Pause. This is all about works-based righteousness. God reminded all that every righteous man could end up separated from God because of his transgression. His prior righteousness would not rescue him on the day of God's judgment which points mankind to the gospel. When I say to the righteous, he will surely live, and he so trusts in his righteousness that he commits iniquity, none of his righteous deeds will be remembered, but in that same iniquity of his which he has committed, he will die. But when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and he turns from his sin and practices justice and righteousness, if a wicked man restores a pledge, pays back what he has taken by robbery, walks by the statutes which ensure life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he has committed will be remembered against him. He has practiced justice and righteousness, he shall surely live. Yet your fellow citizens say, the way of the Lord is not right, when it is their own way that is not right. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, then he shall die in it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and practices justice and righteousness, he will live by them. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. Now in the twelfth year of our exile, on the fifth of the tenth month, the refugees from Jerusalem came to me, saying, The city has been taken. Now the hand of the Lord had been upon me in the evening, before the refugees came. And he opened my mouth at the time they came to me in the morning. So my mouth was opened and I was no longer speechless. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, they who live in these waste places in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one, yet he possessed the land. So to us who are many, the land has been given as a possession. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, you eat meat with the blood in it. Lift up your eyes to idols as you shed blood. Should you then possess the land? Pause. If you're new here, eating blood and seeking idols was forbidden in God's laws. You rely on your sword. 
you commit abominations and each of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you then possess the land? Thus you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely those who are in the waste places will fall by the sword. And whoever is in the open field, I will give to the beasts to be devoured. And those who are in the strongholds and in the caves will die of pestilence. I will make the land a desolation and a waste, and the pride of her power will cease, and the mountains of Israel will be desolate so that no one will pass through. Then they will know that I am the Lord, when I make the land a desolation and a waste because of all their abominations which they have committed. But as for you, son of man, your fellow citizens who talk about you by the walls and in the doorways of the houses, speak to one another, each to his brother, saying, Come now. And hear what the message is which comes forth from the Lord. They come to you as people come, and sit before you as my people, and hear your words, but they do not do them. For they do the lustful desires expressed by their mouth, and their heart goes after their gain. Behold, you are to them like a sensual song by one who has a beautiful voice, and plays well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not practice them. So when it comes to pass, as surely it will, then they will know that a prophet has been in their midst. Our saintly snippet for the day is from Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron's School of Biblical Evangelism. One moment, please. According to the scriptures, the real function of the law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin, not merely perception, but an acquaintance with sin, which works toward repentance. Charles Spurgeon said that the law serves a most necessary purpose. How true are his words regarding sinners. They will never accept grace until they tremble before a just and holy law. Those who see the role of the law will be sons of thunder before they are sons of consolation. They know that the shoes of human pride must be removed before sinners can approach the burning bush of the gospel. It is important to realize that we can evoke a tearful response from sinners by saying that God loves them. The message is more appealing to both the Christian and the sinner. It certainly is easier to speak of love than of sin. Many years ago, before I understood the function of God's law, I told a prostitute of God's love and was delighted that she immediately began weeping. Unbeknown to me, her tears were not tears of godly sorrow for sin, but merely an emotional response to the need of a father's love. In my ignorance, I joyfully led her in a sinner's prayer. However, I was disappointed sometime later when she fell away, and her tender heart became very callous towards the things of God. Let's close out in prayer. Lord, today I'd like for us to focus on Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21 during our prayer time. I'd like for us to be reminded as to what snares the enemy would like to see us fall into. And we ask you, Lord, in helping us to resist the devil. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Lord, please give us great self-control and discernment to turn away from unrighteousness and wickedness and guide us to victory for your name's sake. We also pray that you would thwart the plans of the enemy and grant us all more grace and mercy until your trumpet sounds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll keep on fighting that fight, amen. God bless you and take care.